Okay, so all of these they want us to do without a calculator. So I'm going to do them without a calculator. So the first one asked me to find where is inverse cotangent 1. Well, I so here's what I do in my head. I know tangent is opposite over adjacent. That means cotangent is the adjacent over the opposite. I'd have to write that down first. Then because it's cotangent, I can put that over 1. So now I have an adjacent side of 1 and an opposite side of 1. For what two quadrants is inverse cotangent defined? 1 and 2. And this ratio is positive. So what quadrant am I in? 1. Now my adjacent side needs to be 1. My opposite side needs to be 1. And so what is this angle? 45. It is a 45 degree angle. This is a 1, 1, radical 2. 45, 45, 90. Special right triangle. So now the question is, how much did I rotate in radians to get 45 degrees in the first quadrant? I rotated pi over 4 radians. Questions? So you just flip it up and just put pi pi over one. Okay, so we're gonna work number 16 next. We're gonna do it in two, we're gonna do it two different ways. We're gonna first work it the way it's written, and then I'll show you how you could do it with a reciprocal. So if I was asked to find the arc secant of negative radical two. The first thing I want to do is put this over 1. So I have a ratio of sides. I know secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse. That means arc secant is a ratio of the hypotenuse over adjacent. So I know these two sides. The numerator is my hypotenuse. The denominator is my adjacent. Next, what quadrants is inverse cosine defined for? or inverse secant defined for? One and two. They're both defined in quadrants one and two. Because this ratio is negative, I know the triangle takes place in the second quadrant because in the first one it would be positive. And now from my central angle, the hypotenuse needs to be radical two. The adjacent side needs to be one. So what is my central angle, my central reference angle here? It is a 45 degree angle. This is a 45, 45, 90 special right triangle. Now the question is how much did I rotate to get a 45 degree reference angle in the second quadrant? 135 degrees, which in radians is... 3 pi over 4 radians. And that's the way I would work it. Now, if you wanted to work it out the other way, we talked about how arc secant was the reciprocal of arc cosine. So we could find arc cosine of the reciprocal of this ratio. So instead of negative radical 2 over 1, it'd be negative 1 over radical 2. But it's still the same process now. I would say what quadrants are arc cosine defined for? First and second. I would say because it's negative, I know I have to be in the second quadrant. Then cosine is the ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse. So now my adjacent is 1, my hypotenuse is radical 2, but it draws the exact same triangle in the exact same position just by flipping that ratio. So it doesn't matter which one you use necessarily, just one you're comfortable with. The only time it matters is if I draw a ratio, 
like how here we've got 1 over radical 2, if I get a ratio that I don't know the special right triangle for, then I can't use this one. I would have to do it this way in my calculator. Does that make sense? Next, let's look at 14. 14 is the inverse cosecant of does not exist. So I'd really like for that to be a ratio. So how could I get a does not exist ratio? Put it over zero. It had to be divided by zero. To get does not exist, it has to be over zero. So the inverse cosecant of does not exist is the same thing as the inverse cosecant of 1 over 0. Now, what quadrants is inverse cosecant defined for? Inverse cosecant would be the same as inverse sine. Inverse sine is 1 and 4, so inverse cosecant is 1 and 4. So I'm dealing here in the first and the fourth quadrants with my unit circle. Now the next thing I'm thinking, I know sine is the y value. So that means cosecant would be 1 over the y value. So now where in the first and fourth quadrants is the y value 0? The y value would be 0 on the x-axis. On the x-axis, the y value is 0. So now how much did I rotate to get a y value of 0? I didn't rotate. I stayed right where I was at. So it is a 0 radian rotation. Now a problem like this, you can't even put it in your calculator. Right? There would be, I guess, I guess you could. I guess you could flip this, and then you could go with the inverse sine of 0 over 1, and that will give you 0. So actually, that one would work. But you've got to make sure you understand it, right? Because if you have no idea what you're doing, you obviously can't put a does not exist in your calculator. Okay, if I look at 15... 15 is the inverse secant of negative 1. So I'm going to put negative 1 over 1. And then I'm going to think about what quadrants is inverse secant defined for. 1 and 2. One and two. Inverse secant is the same as, and the same quadrants as inverse cosine. So it's in 1 and 2. Because it's negative, I know I'm in the second quadrant. All right, but the thing is, what is secant? Secant is the, well, cosine is the opposite, or the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So this would be the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So can I have a hypotenuse and an adjacent side that are both one? No. So... So, hmm, think, Cody, think, 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 think. What would I do? What would I do? What would I do? So I know I can't draw a triangle. This is what I would think. I'm going to rotate to an axis. So the thing I would think is inverse cosine would be the reciprocal of negative 1, which would still be negative 1. And I know that inverse cosine is the x value. So where in the first and second quadrants is my x value negative 1? It's on the x-axis over here. So how much did I rotate to get there? I rotated pi radians. I guess another way I could have done it, but my brain 
wasn't working with me at that point. If I know cosine is the x value, then secant would have been 1 over the x value. But see, that would get tricky because you'd have had to move your negative down there. Right? So I think the way I showed you is actually better. So why is my x value one, not 1 if I did it this way? Why would my x value be negative 1 and not 1? Even though one's on bottom, do you know? Well, because the whole thing is negative, remember that secant would be one over the x. Right now, this is negative one over the x, so I would have to move the negative to the bottom to make it be a positive one over the x value. So that's a little tricky if you do it this way. That's why I think, in my mind, I did it. This way. That's the way that makes sense to me. I wouldn't have made any errors. I might have messed this up if I didn't do this one first. Okay, so that's not a great question. I didn't do a very good job on that. Do you guys have questions on that one? I mean, it's a fine question. I did a bad job explaining it, is what I'm trying to say. I'll be better. Let's look at 17. We're looking for the arc cotangent of does not exist. So how did I get a does not exist? I had to have a 1 divided by 0. Does not exist only happens when I divide by 0. So because I'm dealing with a 1 and a 0, I'm going to bet I rotated to an axis. So in my head, I know that tangent is y over x. So cotangent would be my x over y. Now what quadrant is arc cotangent defined for? 1 and 2. So I'm looking in the first and second quadrants where is my x value 1 and my y value 0? It's right here. Right, That's the point, 1, 0. So then how much did I rotate to get to this point? I rotated 0 radians to get to that point. Questions? No. When you divide by zero, you get... No. No, 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 no. Let me do one. I get what you're saying. Let me do one that's not. Let's do... Um... I had to think. Okay, so if I did this one, arc secant of does not exist. So does not exist, only exists if I have 1 divided by 0. Now I know that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is the x value. So cosine is x, so that means arc secant would be 1 over x, because it's its reciprocal. What quadrants is arc secant defined for? 1 and 2. So now where is my x value 0? x value 0 would be here on the positive y-axis at this point. So how much did I rotate to get here? I rotated pi over 2 radians. 
And that answers what you were asking, right? So no. Just because there's a zero on bottom, it's not always a zero rotation. Everybody good with that? All right, let's look at the last one here without a calculator. If I had to do arc cosecant of 2 radical 3 over 3. So this is one that's going to get a little ugly because does this look exactly like a triangle that I know? No, but I see the radical 3. So in my head, I'm thinking, well, there's probably going to be a 30, 60, 90 somewhere in here because I can't get radical 3s and do it without a calculator without a 30, 60, 90. But let's just watch what happens. Let's see where it goes. So I know arc secant is the reciprocal of, I'm sorry, I know arc cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that means this would be the hypotenuse over the opposite. Because the ratio is positive, I know I'm happening in the first quadrant. All of the positives always go in the first quadrant. Now, I need my hypotenuse to be 2 radical 3. <coughs> I need my opposite side to be 3. So i got a couple different ways I could explain this. Um, so I'm going to try them both. See if one of them resonates better with you guys. What I see is, be like I said before, because I see that radical 3 in my head, I was already thinking 30, 60, 90. Across from the 30 is 1. Across from the 60 is radical 3. Hypotenuse is 2. So I'm used to a hypotenuse being 2. But in this problem, my hypotenuse is 2 radical 3, which means how did I get from 2 to 2 radical 3? I multiplied everything in the triangle by radical 3. So then what did this 3 used to be if it got multiplied by radical 3? It used to be a radical 3. So in my head, I, I see this, and I know, well, this is the same thing as a triangle that has a radical 3 here and a 2 here which means my angle of rotation is 60. And then how many radians is that if I rotate it in the positive direction, 60 degrees? Pi over 3. That's one way you could think about it. That's the way I would do it because I feel really comfortable with my 30, 60, 90s, and I understand how they can be manipulated. Now, another thing that we could have done is we could have done like the calculator trick that we've been talking about right in the reciprocal. So arc cosecant is the reciprocal of arc sine. So arc cosecant of 2 radical 3 over 3 is the same thing as arc sine of 3 over 2 radical 3. You guys agree with that? Now I could have put that in my calculator. I could have got the answer. Or I could have rationalized the denominator. Because what do we not like in the denominator? A radical. So if I wanted to rationalize this, I could multiply by radical 3 on top and bottom. And that would give me 3 radical 3 over... Well, radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. And then can this be reduced? Yes. Yeah, this becomes a 1. This becomes a 2. So it's the same thing as arc sine of radical 3 over 2. Well, does that look like a ratio I'm used to seeing? Yes. yes. So I should know what that angle is. Either way, there's probably more ways, but those are the two that come to my mind first of how I could work that. It tells me to evaluate using my calculator. It wants us to give the answer in both degrees and in radians. So here's the first one. Inverse cotangent of 15.6. So here's what I'm going to ask you first. <clears throat> <clears throat> Please think. Please be thinking. This value here, 
Is this in degrees or radians? So what trig function am I using? Arc cotangent. What does arc cotangent or inverse cotangent do? What do all of our inverse trig functions do? We put in a ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse. And what do we get out? The angle of rotation. It works in the opposite direction. So 15.6, is that degrees or radians? It's neither. That's not in degrees or in radians. It's neither one. We're going to give the answer in degrees and in radians at the end. Because the arc trig functions, or the inverse trig functions, take the ratio and give you the angle. It doesn't work like the original trig functions, where you're given the angle in degrees or radians, and then given the ratio. So the answer is neither. So ha. Huh. So when I put this in my calculator, can I put in inverse cotangent of 15.6? No. No, you don't have an inverse cotangent button. So you're gonna have to use the in or you don't have an inverse cotangent button. You're gonna have to use the inverse tangent button and then write the reciprocal of those sides. What do we get? Three point six seven. Three point six seven? Is that degrees or radians? Seven radians. Well, what's your calculator? Three, degrees. So this is three point six seven degrees. Now put it in radians. What's your answer in radians? There's your answers. Is it 3.67 degrees or 0 0.064 radians? Do you have to put that Yes, they asked me to here. Just read the question. Every question is going to be different. Some will say, put your answer in radians. Some will say degrees. Some will say both. So we're just we're making you do both to make sure you understand. The next one, inverse cosecant. I don't know that ratio, so I can't do it without a calculator. So I need to put this in my calculator. Do I have an inverse cosecant button? No, so I'm going to have to use the inverse sine. And what am I putting in my calculator? 1 over Have you ever been able to do these? It's literally put in your calculator. When, when did you say you, you flipped the whole thing and then you just flipped the argument? Yes. If I'm taking sine of an angle, sine of an angle, I could, let me, let me use one. If I'm taking cosecant of an angle, then I can rewrite this as 1 over sine of the angle. Whenever I'm using my original six trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent. Here we're using our inverse trig functions. Inverse secant, inverse cosecant, inverse cotangent. So when it's inverses, we flip the argument. When it's the originals, we flip the entire thing. Do you need to go over the last two, or y'all got it? Can y'all put that in your calculator? It's the same. I mean, there's nothing special. Okay, so now we're combining trig functions. Here on 23, I'm taking tangent of the arc cosine of a half. So let's think about, before we even try to work it, let's think big picture what's going to happen. 
So what's happening on the inside? I'm taking the ratio, one half, and I'm finding how much did I rotate to get there, right? So the answer here is going to be an angle. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to take tangent of the angle and find a ratio. So I'm going to do the same triangle, essentially, twice. So here we go. So to start with, we start on the inside. This is asking me for arc cosine of one half. What quadrants is arc cosine defined for? One and two. Because the ratio is positive, I know I'm in quadrant one. Cosine is the ratio of the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So my adjacent side is 1. My hypotenuse is 2. Which means what is my central angle? It's a 60 degree angle. This is a 1 radical 3, 2. Special right triangle. So what have I found? Well, I found that I've rotated what in radians? I've rotated pi over 3. So this whole answer that I'm underlining in red is pi over 3. So now the question is, what is tangent of pi over 3? Well, pi over 3 puts me in the first quadrant. In the first quadrant, tangent is positive. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So my opposite is radical 3, my adjacent is 1, so my answer is radical 3. So it's literally just the third side. That time. That time. It's not every time. Sometimes it's the exact same ratio you started with. Radical 3 is what we're looking for. Radical 3. Do you see the thought process? Start on the inside, work it out, work that whole problem out, and then go to the outside. Let's look at the next one. The next one is similar. We're going to be finding secant of arc sine of 1 over radical 2. So we start on the inside. Arc sine is defined for quadrants 1 and 4. Because it's positive, I know I'm in the first quadrant. Sine is a ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse. So what is my central angle? It's a 45 degree angle. It's a 1, 1, radical 2. 45, 45, 90. Special right triangle. So how much did I rotate to get a 45 degree reference angle in the first quadrant? Pi over 4. So what am I finding? I am finding secant of pi over 4. Well, if I rotate pi over 4, guess where I get? I get in this exact same position. That doesn't always happen, but it is here. So I'm using this exact same triangle. This is a pi over 4 rotation, which puts me in the first quadrant. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse. That means secant is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So I know this is a 1, 1, radical 2. The hypotenuse here would be radical 2. The adjacent would be 1. So radical 2 over 1 is radical 2. And because I'm in the first quadrant, secant is positive. So my answer is positive. I forgot to say that earlier, so I threw it in at the end. Questions? All right, let's ramp it up a little bit. 
Now, what's different about 25? Yes. Now the outside one is the inverse. And the inside one is my original. So now on these, I'm going to take, I'm going to rotate pi over 2, and I'm going to find the ratio of sine. It's going to be some opposite over hypotenuse. Well, actually, not this time. It's going to be on a, it's going to rotate to an axis, isn't it? Or pi over 2. But in general, I'm going to find a ratio of the opposite over hypotenuse. Then I'm going to find out where does tangent give me that same, or where does inverse tangent give me that same ratio? So my answer again is going to be a rotation. This time my answer is the rotation in the end. So let's go. Sine of pi over 2, that's going to put me here. This is the ordered pair, 0, 1. I know sine is the y value. So at this point, what is my y value? 1. So what I've got underlined in red, the answer there is 1. So now it's asking me to find what is the inverse tangent of 1. Well, I'm going to write this as a ratio because tangent is the opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to write that as inverse tangent of 1 over 1. Does everybody follow? Now, for what quadrants is inverse tangent defined? 1 and 4. And because the ratio is positive, that means I'm in the first quadrant. Tangent is the opposite over adjacent. So I need my opposite side to be 1, my adjacent to be 1. So what is my central angle of rotation? It's 45. And now in radians, how much did I rotate to get a central angle of 45? Pi over 4 radians. That's my answer. You guys want to try the last one on your own? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, if you have like a pi or yeah, like a pi thing, you have your problem, there will always be an intersection. So, if you, you have a pi between your problems, will there always be a pi over, or a pi subset? And then if there's just a normal number, like pi over 2. You're going to get a ratio of sides. Okay. Yes. The way I always think about it, is at the very end, what's on the outside? Here I've got an inverse trig function. So these give angles as answers. Mm -hmm. So if an inverse trig function is on the outside, my final answer is going to be an angle. Final answer is going to be an angle. Here on the outside is the regular trig functions. So here my final answer is going to be a ratio of the opposite over adjacent, of the hypotenuse over adjacent. See, I have a hard time remembering. I have to go through the whole process in my head. I know y'all think I'm lying when I tell you I don't have it memorized. I can't tell you what secant is right now. I'd have to say secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's the hypotenuse over adjacent. I literally have to do that every time. Because I don't like memorizing. So I never did. Can I just take a guess and say that uh, 26 is, the answer is What quadrant is negative pi over 3 in? Where is arc cosine defined? So it can't be your answer. If, if they would have agreed and both been defined in the same quadrant, then yes, they cancel each other out. So like if I was looking for arc cosine of cosine of pi over 3 in the first quadrant, then it would be pi over 3. So in order for them to just cancel, they have to, it, the angle has to appear in a quadrant that both functions are defined for, the inverse and the original.
So if I'm finding cosine of negative pi over 3, what quadrant am I in? Negative pi over 3 is in the fourth quadrant. So my triangle is going to be occurring in the fourth quadrant. But I thought cosine was in 1 and 2. Hey, thank you. Inverse cosine is in 1 and 2. Regular cosine is in any quadrant. So I'm in the fourth. Pi over 3 is a rotation of 60 degrees. That's what you need to have memorized. So that means my central angle here is 60 degrees. Across from the 60 is radical 3. Across from the 30 is 1. Hypotenuse is 2. So here's my triangle in the fourth quadrant. Because I'm in the fourth quadrant, all students take calculus. That means that cosine is going to be positive. So my ratio is positive, and it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which would be 1 over 2. So my answer here is 1 over 2. So that means now I'm finding the arc cosine of 1 over 2. In what quadrants is arc cosine defined? 1 and 2. Because this ratio is positive, I'm in the first quadrant. So if I draw a triangle in the first quadrant, where the adjacent side is 1, the hypotenuse is 2, how much did I rotate to get there? 60 degrees. So in radians, what is this rotation? 